Hi everybody, Adam Steele from Hot Pole Studios here. And today we're talking about a plugin that seems really quite bizarre to me, but is very, very cool in what it does. This is Gullfoss. <laughs> Now, Gullfoss, as far as I, I did a quick Google search, uh, seems to be a waterfall in Iceland. Uh, but down the list is the plugin from Sound Theory. And it's got kind of a, a visual that does look a little bit like a waterfall when it's going, which is kind of cool. And it's kind of an automated uh, EQ that does some very clever things that are very hard to explain. So I'm now going to go away and really study the manual. We're going to cut to my little home setup where I'm going to go through this on some headphones with a couple of mixes and try and use it in a couple of different situations and try and show you what this thing's all about. All right, guys, let's look at Gullfoss. My uh, laptop is currently going absolutely bananas, so apologies for the background noise. But I'll be uh, dipping out the voiceover while we're doing specific bits here. So you can see Gullfoss in front of me. Uh, I've put it on the master bus of this track uh, by a friend of mine, Joel Jordy. And it's after everything. So it's after uh, mixed bus compression and all that kind of stuff. So I'm using Gullfoss as a master bus kind of magic cure, as it were. Uh, we uh, recorded this in my studio and mixed it there. And I didn't really want to boost too much high end in anything. Uh, I do have a tendency to over brighten things when I get a bit excited. And something that's interesting about Joel's voice specifically is that Joel's main vocal, I'll just pull up virtual mix rack, uh, put it over here. Joel's main uh, kind of vocal style is very. Uh, mid focused for whatever reason his voice just really cuts through in the mids even with quite heavy compression um if i start to try and eq out the mids in his voice suddenly it sounds like there's a hole in it for whatever reason his voice even with like i mean we ended up going with a u47 model on the microphone but for him that seemed to to work but it's just something that's quite interesting. I'll play you a little bit of the track with Gullfoss Bypass before the main vocal comes in. And then you'll hear how the main vocal really cuts through. But if I was to take the vo vocal volume down, suddenly it gets lost in the mix. So it's quite a tricky kind of balance. Okay, so there are a few things going on here that are artistic choices, like there's quite a lot of reverb on the drums, there's quite a bit of echo on a, a, a an electric guitar that goes through the middle of the track, Um, but let's see what happens when I turn on Gullfoss, and I've got a few settings already set, which I'll talk about uh, in a second, uh, but let's just uh, have it unbypassed, let's see the difference. Just played an extra line there because I wanted to show that when he really started belting out that vocal, um, it really started to dip a couple of key harmonics in the vocal in the relevant areas. But then as soon as the note was done, it was gradually lifted back. And personally, I think that's very, very clever. Um, I can see how uh, currently the way that Gullfoss is set, um, it's kind of boosting the bass and dipping the treble, that's because it's being fed a rather small amount of white noise from the virtual tape machines. 
So it has some material to work on, so it thinks that's what it's supposed to be doing. Um, but yeah, um, it suddenly took a track that was a little bit dull sounding and had a very kind of cutting vocal and not only, uh, well, tamed the vocal, but brought out some of the high end without sounding nasty at any particular frequency range. And that's very, very clever. The The number of controls you have is ex exceptionally limited. But sometimes too many controls can be a bad thing. I've quite often suffered from option paralysis. And as you can see from this mix going on behind it in Reaper there, there's tons and tons of work going on to get us to the point where we were at. Uh, but a lot of that was from kind of a tracking session with the basic mix. I could have gone back and spent hours really kind of refining the mix, but instead I've put on Gulfos and I've gone, oh, right, okay, this sounds great. So let's have a talk about what each of these particular uh, controls does. So we'll start with the bias and brighten at zero, and we'll talk about, firstly, the recover. So the recover function uh, means if it feels like there's anything in your mix that could come out that might sound nice, it then recovers those frequencies. So if I hit play with it 0% and start to drag this up, especially in this instrumental section here, So that's going absolutely crazy, and that's bringing out uh, quite a bit of uh, low end in the bass, and that real jing, jing, jing on the uh, acoustic guitar there. That's with the recover at 200%, which, even according to the people who make Gulfos, is an insane amount, but they left that in there just in case you ever wanted to go over 100%. But as far as what they were saying in their guidance, anything over 100% is probably going to sound weird. So let's try that 100% and then just bypass it. I find that really interesting that that's, uh, that's boosting some super high frequencies, but not stuff in the kind of 2 to 3k range where the human ear perceives harshness very clearly. And now that it's stopped, it's really trying to bring in loads of bass. Uh, but if it's playing the song, it doesn't do that because it knows that from the kick and the bass, they're fairly well balanced. It doesn't really need to add anything, but it does look like it adds some real sub stuff, which depending on your style of mastering, I quite often like to shelve out things below 20 or 30 hertz anyway. So it's just kind of not knowing that and trying to correct for that, which I can appreciate. Now, Tame... Let's have a look at Tame. Tame seems to be more for if you've got something like a harsh sound, uh, where you want more of that sound, but you don't necessarily want the harshness, and where a usual EQ could tame that sound. If, the, if it's only harsh at certain points of the song, you either spend ages <clears throat> either automating uh, an EQ or trying to use a dynamic EQ or that kind of thing, and then if you're using a dynamic EQ, what if that point of harshness changes? Let's say you've got a resonance on a guitar part that just goes and is really quite aggressive, but then it's different on different notes. But then if you try and take too much EQ out of that region, uh, you either spend a long time working on it or you find that the definition is removed from said instrument. Uh, so let's try Tame at 200%. And this shouldn't do very much, I wouldn't think, until that main vocal comes in that does have that quite overbearing mid kind of focus. So let's try that. So you can hear on those, make it out, you can actually see it dipping 
the harmonics on that vocal that have really started to saturate. So I'll just bring the tone back to zero. Now, you can use these two uh, in conjunction with each other, and that's what I was doing. And I decided that for this song, somewhere between 40 and 50% of Tame and Recover uh, worked really well in conjunction with each other. Uh, so what I'll just do for a quick example here is I'll take them to 100% for both of them. And what's interesting to me is the Recover and Tame kind of work separately of each other and work against each other in sort of an adaptive way. So let's try this bypassed and unbypassed, 100% of each. And so you can see there that it's really bringing out loads of high end because this song was actually quite a, a dark profile overall. Um, so that tells me if I had this song back in the uh, studio, I'd probably start to raise some of the brightness on some of those separate instruments. And that would be no bad thing. And that means that something like Gulfoss would have less work to do. It could be quite educational in that way. Um, or it can help you to really kind of work out what you're doing. At some point, I think I ended up doing a bit of mix on headphones, and I've just realised today that with this being a new laptop, I had forgotten to install Sonarworks. Uh, I'm used to using Sonarworks as a monitoring tool, and I naturally have it brighten these headphones. These are Sennheiser 650s, which are quite dark. So I naturally kind of brighten them a bit in, in Sonarworks. And be because of that, I've not been doing that in my mixes last couple of days. So that's quite an interesting thing. Now, let's talk about the bias. Uh, the bias uh, means that if the recover and tame are trying to fight each other, you can tell it which one to prefer. Like for this particular song, I think I had the bias minus somewhere uh, because I needed it to tame those harsh vocals more than bring things out. So let's try that with the bias. Minus a hundred percent. Baby, there's always a way. So put your hand up and deal with the rain. And of course, you can go the other way, and it will prefer to bring more frequencies out rather than tame other frequencies. That sounded a lot more sane to me, uh, but what I was doing was I had Recover and Tame at much more reasonable settings. Now, the last setting is Brighton, because it, it seems, for the genre I wanted this in, I didn't need an overbearing amount of top end, uh, which means that I perceived what Gulfoss was doing to be, again, overly brightening things. Uh, I did appreciate that it was bringing out other frequencies, absolutely. But the overall tonal profile didn't need to be quite so kind of high-end pushed. So because of that, I used the Brighton, which is kind of like after everything else, to just take the top end down a bit. Or you can bring the top end up a little bit. If your genre that you're working in just needs a little bit more crispness, you can do that, and it'll work hand-in-hand hand with the other controls, like so. And then there's a boost function, oh, so you can take down or increase the overall level at the end. I've just set that to be exactly as it was. So, one more time, let's just hear this little clip with uh, Gulfoss on and off.
So yeah, for what it does, Gulfos isn't necessarily cheap because it is quite an expensive plugin. But a lot of mastering engineers that I'm aware of are starting to use this uh, because it can do certain things very quickly, even when using it very subtly, that other processes just can't do. It's very intelligent, you set it in a certain way, and you leave it alone. Although I would fully recommend getting a mix together first, uh, and not trying to kind of mix into this, because then you're trying to, you know, you're almost setting yourself up for failure if you try and use something like this and mix into it, because it will then try and compensate for any kind of mix mistakes. What you should really be trying to do is trying to get a balanced mix that works for you first. And then this will very subtly uh, help with any tiny little frequency things that it can do over... Because as far as I know, it changes the EQ profile 300 times a second. So it can be very subtle and very momentary what Gulfos does. I'm very impressed and I'm certainly going to be using this in conjunction with my other mastering and mixing techniques. Helps when you don't smack your microphone stand. One last thing I'm going to do, I'm going to turn Gulfos off and I'm going to try this just on the main vocal here. What's this EQ? All right, yeah, so I already was aware that there was kind of a a dip there and I wanted the vocal to be brighter, so I'm going to turn that EQ off and I'm going to add Gulfos in here instead of that EQ. And so I'm going to have quite a high percentage of tame on this vocal. I'm just going to solo it while we listen. Uh, probably have the brighten up. Let's see what recovery does on a vocal as well. Baby, there's always a way. So put your hood up and deal with the rain. Because if you want, you can make it all change. You can make, make it all change. Right, yeah, so you can use it. I mean, I'm brightening it quite a lot. But if I use Recover to bring some detail out, Tame to use to stop that mid from poking out, and arguably as a de as well. I'm going to turn off these two de that I had on and see what that does. Baby, there's always a way So put your hood up and deal with the rain Cos if you want, you can make it all change that's interesting. It is working as a DS, so let's try it bypassed. Baby, there's always a way. And then so on. put your hood up and deal with the rain. Cause if you Perceptually it sounds quieter, so I'm gonna try it in the mix now with a boost. I'm gonna guess at 3 dB ish. Because it's taking some mids out. So let's see how that sounds. I'll turn the master Gulfos off. So this is uh, the mix with Gulfos bypassed on that main vocal. And then I'm going to turn it on and see how that works. Right, so the gain was actually the output gain. Let's go with that. Okay, so now the vocal is too loud again, so I've just brought that gain down. Boost, it turns out, wasn't what I thought it was. I was mixing up boost and gain. I've just looked at the manual. Boost is to do with boosting the apparent low end rather than the mids, uh, which I'll keep in mind. But that wouldn't, for me, apply on a master. Might be interesting on something like a guitar. But let's try this with that couple of dB of uh, overall gain lift and then try the bypass. <laughs>
So that's really interesting. It's dipping uh, around kind of the, the same 800 hertz region that I would naturally dip. But it's boosting around 500 hertz where I would also usually put dip. But because it's complementing the two, it sounds right. That's very interesting because, uh, yeah, Joel's voice definitely has that kind of lower mid saturation thing about it, which uh, certain male voices especially do, and which is why it can be find quite difficult finding the right microphone to go with that. But yeah, I've just replaced two DSs and an EQ with Gulfos. So it's the kind of thing that's definitely multi-purpose. Yeah, fascinating. So... I'm definitely going to be using that in far more situations than I thought I would. I, I don't know if I like the overall EQ sound now of Gulfos. Uh, I know there are a couple of controls here where I can limit it, and I might actually do that on the low end on this vocal. Let's try that. That's nicer. So now I'm perceptively, I can probably put the boost back to zero now. Uh, I'm not affecting the low end because I saw it was really boosting the low end, which I've specifically cut out of a vocal. I don't want too much of that. Uh, it's recovering some detail in the high end. Quite heavy tame means that it's DSing and taming those mid peaks. Uh, there's a tiny bit of brightening, but not a lot going on. And let's listen to that again with it bypassed and then with it on. And now that sounds like it's uh, sitting in the mix, right? I'm going to pull up the Gulfos on the master track again and uh, turn that on because I had it bypassed in Reaper. Probably not tame so much now. And let's try this with both. And that's really interesting that the issues that I had with the vocal, now they're being taken care of by the vocal Gulfos. It's not got these massive peaks and troughs on the master. I'm going to play a, a bit from the song from earlier on where the vocal isn't cutting like that. Let's see how that works. So now I can hear that the uh, the tame on the uh, the vocal Gulfos is really harshly overly uh, de-essing. So let's try it with less tame and uh, more brighten on that. And then maybe I can automate that later on on the part of the vocal that's just overly piercing. Fantastic. So there we go. And I'll definitely automate some of these characteristics if I've got a particular problem section. Because I like the idea of using something like Gulfos on a specific uh, vocal or something like that to really help EQ balance it actively. But yeah, if there's a real problem, I can really be heavy handed and then automate it back. On the master, I'm probably much more likely to try and get the most balanced mix I can then use it rather gently the recover seems a little high there for for what i would want to be doing but 
then, yeah, this is really powerful stuff. So I definitely intend to be using this a lot more. Check out Sound Theory's Gulfos if you want to do any real detailed mixing or mastering. Check it out. Back to me in the studio. So it's fascinating. I'm definitely going to be using Gulfos on my mixes from now on. Although I will definitely be careful not to put it on and then mix into it because it seems to be the kind of plugin where you make all your educated mix decisions first and then it can do some small corrections. And if you try and go too far and lean into it, it might produce some results that weren't entirely ideal. But that's entirely up to you uh, how you choose to use it. Uh, big thanks to Sound Theory who sent me over a code to try this out. Uh, full disclosure, I'm not being paid to do a review of this. Uh, I just wanted to try it because it looked really cool. And yeah, I'm definitely going to be using it from now on. So yeah, big thanks to Sound Theory. Uh, hit that like button if you found this useful, found it interesting. Uh, subscribe to the channel for more gear reviews, hardware, plugins, uh, guitar stuff. Uh, I've got a, a video coming out very soon of a PV6505 versus a 5150, uh, all sorts of stuff like that. And there's loads of Reaper tutorials as well. That's my kind of thing. So uh, subscribe to the channel. And uh, if you haven't already, check out everything else that we've done. Thanks for watching. I'm Adam Steele for Hot Pulse Studios. And I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye. Thanks for watching, guys. If you enjoyed this, feel free to check out our other videos, as you can find here, or check out our Facebook and Twitter, or our Patreon page, which helps us to make more videos like this. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.